What's up guys, Tanner back from the GT's Outdoors channel and today got kind of a special video um, had to run down to Tennessee for work um, work on a semi on the side of the road um, so of course I was going to try and stop by the old SMKW and I got to so I'm really excited about that um, got a good little uh, haul of knives here I haven't decided what I'm going to call this video yet so I'll figure that out while I'm uh, putting it up on the channel but got some cool stuff that i've been interested in for a while that i just haven't picked up if you guys haven't been to smoky mountain knife works check it out it's a really really cool shop i mean it's huge it's a ton a ton of knives so all right guys without further ado let's uh let's get into it here so they do open these at uh the store to make sure you know you're happy with the one you're getting um first up is the cold steel fin bear uh, you see what i paid there i mean I got this as a work knife because um, for $13 it's cold steel and I don't, you know, have to worry about getting beat up. So there's the back of the box, warranty, all that stuff. These do come with the um, like Securex, I guess, style sheath is what they're going to call it. I'm not really, really sure if they're calling it a Securex or not, but it's not the cheap nylon, you know, piece of crap. So here this is. So it's got clip. The, uh, the button hook there just says uh, Cold Steel, the new font. Let's take this guy out. And there it is. So this is not a true Scandi grind. Um, it's uh, a little different, but that's all right. So this is the Fin Bear. Um, it is kind of slippery to hold on to. It's not super textured. I thought it would be more rubbery, but for the price I paid, I can't complain too much. It's like a Puko style knife. There's the shape of the handle. It's kind of a, I don't know what shape you'd want to call that, but it, it tapers definitely down towards the bottom. I think it's pretty comfortable. I think it could be a little bit less, uh, less slick, but these grooves do help somewhat. Um, but I might, I might do something to it just because there is no guard. And if your hand slips, you are going to cut it. So there is the fin bear. Um, fits really nicely into the sheath locks right in good retention all that stuff so pretty nice figure that'd be a good little knife for work for uh, you know general use hunting camp use that kind of stuff so i've got a piece of paper out here let's uh i mean it's cold steel it should be sharp out of the box so here we go like butter so nice and sharp. Uh, this is the uh, German 4116 Krupp steel. So not a super steel by any means, but uh, not not really all that bad for for what it is. So all right, Finn Bear. Set this guy off to the side here. Go for our next one. I got three cold steels total. This is our second one. This is the Canadian belt knife. Um, I really don't remember how much I paid for it. I'm going to say around that 13 to $15 mark. So same thing. They make sure you like it and whatever. All right. So same, same style sheath clip with a button hook there. Just a little bit, you know, different shape and whatever for where it's molded to the knife. Um, let's pull this guy out. So, um, I'm not as big of a fan of this one. Um, it's all right. It's got some pretty aggressive jimping here, which is nice. The handle is just really slick. I'm going to have to definitely do something about that. It is just not really gripping for me. Um, it's it's not bad. It's just kind of, eh, it could be a little bit better. But, I mean, for the price you're paying, you can't complain. Got this uh, cool design. Again, that Krupp Steel. So, Canadian belt knife. The cold steel. So let's give her a sharpness test real quick. Same, nice and sharp, nice and sharp. So there is the Canadian belt knife. It does have a lanyard hole as well on here. Just notice this, I might put a lanyard on. It's got kind of an odd shape for sure. So retention's really good, clicks right in, not going anywhere. Set him to the side. Uh, our last cold steel 
is going to be Roach Belly. I really like this knife. I only paid, you can see, $12.95 for it. Um, four and a half inch blade, eight and a half overall. Um, I guess I should have told you that on the other ones. The Finbear has a four inch blade and eight and a half overall, 2.8 ounces, which is super light. This one's 2.6 ounces, which is ridiculously light. And this one is 2.2 ounces, the belt knife, with a four inch blade, eight and a half inch overall length. So they're all about the same length, just different weights. So two, I mean, 2.2 ounces is crazy light, but I like this one, I think the best of the three I bought. So, same thing here. Ugh. Cold steel. Now this one I noticed, it's not gonna fall out, but it kinda comes almost out of there just a little bit. So, you know, just a little, I don't know. I don't know if that's normal or not. You guys tell me if you got a roach belly. So, without further ado, there's the roach belly. Now, it's a copy of like an old patch knife. They even got a little homage to that with a powder horn and an old muzzle loader. Um, does have a lanyard hole. Uh, same kind of jimping. Super comfortable handle. I mean, just fits the hand. It really reminds me of my Spyderco Bow River, honestly, a lot. Um, and for a quarter of the price, you know, go beat on this one. The only thing, again, is this handle is very similar to... If I think it might be almost the same material as the uh, Canadian belt knife, and it's kind of slick. That's the only thing I'm not loving about about it is it's kind of slick. So I'm gonna have to texture it or do something with it. I'm sure I'll make a video on that, guys. Do do a little modification on uh, on this guy. But I really like this Roach Belly. This thing's really nice, especially for the money. I really like nice slicing style blade. So let's. Uh, I mean, that's just wicked sharp. So, awesome. There is the Roach Belly. The only thing I'm a little annoyed with is that... Yeah, it just didn't... No, it's got a little bit of movement. But nothing major. It ain't coming out of there. Alright, next up. I'm going to save the biggest knife I bought for last. Um, Martini knives. I've really wanted to get into martini knives. I really like their uh, design and everything. I've got a couple of old martini fillet knives and a Rapala fillet knife, which if you don't know, Rapala is, you know, they, they bought the name or whatever. And they, they make the, the knives now. So there is an English there if you want to stop and pause and read that um so that's pretty neat um it says finland down here i'm not sure where this one is made um, i don't know if it is actually made in finland i'm pretty sure but this is the martini um the little condor basic is what they call it so pull this guy out set you off the side all right there it is so we got since 1928 Martini Finland on there. Um, nice little leather loop with a button dangler. So if you're wearing overalls or whatnot, you can put it on there. I bought this for squirrel hunting. A um, little drop-in. I like these little drop-in sheaths um, with little knives for squirrel hunting and rabbit hunting and that kind of thing. Um, so there it is. J Martini Finland. There is that. So, uh, U.S. patent. Um, it's got a rubberized handle, so that's cool. Um, really, really nice Scandi grind blade. Um, I've got real big hands, and I can just get all four fingers on there. So, a little bit of a smaller knife, obviously, um, but that's exactly what I wanted. Small little, you know, skinning blade. I really like this. This rubber handle with this pommel is just really nice. It really just grips your hand in there. So there is that. Let's see how sharp she is. Oh my. Super, super, super sharp. So that's awesome. So there's the little condor. 
And it fits really nicely in this sheath, even with just a leather. No problem with retention. So there's the little condor. We're actually going to set him there for now because our next knife is the Martini created by Arctic Evolution, which is cool. The regular condor. So I got one size up for deer and that kind of stuff. So same sheath, just bigger. You only got your, your button dangler and all that kind of stuff. So same style there as you can tell j martini finland uh this one does say inox on it which is stainless and this one does not um so that's interesting i don't know if this is a carbon steel or what this is yeah uh, i don't really know a ton about them um so this is a stainless one here i liked the skinnier blade than the large hunter a large hunter blade probably comes down to here i figured this would have a little bit more um capability for what I'm going to do with it. And this is also going to be a hunting knife for maybe stuff a little bit bigger than rabbits and squirrels. Who knows? I might use this one for rabbits, squirrels, coons, who knows? So really, really nice. And it, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Just ridiculously sharp. So these are awesome. Here's that. Put it back in his sheath. So those are my two Martini knives. I'm thinking about getting more of these if I really like them with usage. So there's those two. All right, guys, I saved the biggest for the last. Bam. Condor, tool, and knife. So I'm not really sure if these were blems or what they were, but they were on sale. Um, I got it on clearance for $64.88. And it is the Knulu Juju knife. So I'm an Ulu fan. Um, I like them a lot. So when I found out this was originally an Ulu design and then they made it into a knife, then it just kind of morphed from there. I uh, really liked it. So it comes with a little packet. Um, their product you know, stuff, everything they got for their product line. We'll set the box over here. And there it is. So this is how it came. It's got a couple scratches in the sheath for whatever reason, but I'm not really worried about that. Uh, really heavy duty leather sheath, really like it. So there is that um, heavy button snap. And there it is. The Condor made in El Salvador, Canulu Juju, or Canulu Julu, I'm sorry. And it is in uh, 440C stainless the only thing i did notice about it i don't know if you guys can see this it almost looks like there is a just a slight bend um in the tang there i'm not really sure if it's just me or what but it almost looks i line that up straight here like there is a slight bend i don't know might just be me but Either way, I'm going to beat the crap out of it. Um, it is in their kitchen series, I believe, is what they said in the little packet kind of deal. Which is kind of odd to me, but it doesn't really... Yeah, it's in their... twenty. This is a 2018 catalog in their kitchen series. Here it is here. Designed by Joe Flowers. Um, it was new for 2018. So this is a little bit older one. Um, I, I'm not going to use this as a kitchen knife. Um... I'm going to use this as a skinning knife, as a camp knife, um, some, maybe some bushcraft and stuff. I really like this knife. I mean, I, I think this big belly to it is just going to be awesome for a lot of stuff. Handles a walnut handle, and it is super comfortable. I really, really like it. It's tapered. So, with these three brass pins through it. So, I really like this knife. And uh, that is probably going to be. One of my main skin and knives, I'm trying to get away from cheaper knives anymore. I'm trying to build up some better stuff. So I really like the Condor. There is um, Condor. That is actually my first one. And then we got the big Martini Condor, funnily enough. And then the Martini, the little Condor. The Roach Belly. Canadian belt knife, 
and the fin bear. So that is my little haul from Smoky Mountain Knife Works uh, for my little impromptu trip to there. I am really happy with everything I bought and everything will get used. Um, so that's that's the important part. So thank you guys for watching. I know this is a longer video. I sure do appreciate it. Uh, this is Tanner signing out. I will see you guys in the next one.